No, you ain't gonna act a fool in Papa Do's. No, you ain't gonna act a fool in Papa Do's. You ain't you ain't gonna cuss nobody out in Papa Do's. You ain't gonna raise your voice in Papa Do's. You might you might grind your teeth, but you ain't gonna you ain't gonna say nothing loud. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Yeah, you go to go there, but you need to be around some folk who, who got it going on. Amen. Get rid of the folk that got your problem. Get the people that got your answers. Amen. Look at verse number twenty. Proverbs 13, verse number 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be what? But, but a companion of fools shall be what? So I need to walk with wise folk. Folk, and here's the principle. If I want to deal with my anger issue, then I need to hang around people that don't have anger issues. Amen. And it could be some of your family. Amen. Now, you don't want to cut mama off, but, you know, but mama, if you're going to act like that, I can't be around. See, pastor told me to cut my mama off. I ain't tell you to cut your mama off. I'm, look, if, if, if she can't control it, just look. I'm going to be here for five minutes, and the, after that, I'm gone, because you're going to act a fool. <laughs> Amen. Go to Galatians chapter number two. Another reason why believers get angry, watch this, is because they haven't crucified their flesh. Amen. They haven't crucified their flesh. Whatever I allow to dominate my life, it will give direction to my life. And it could be that the reason why things are not happening for you is because you're allowing your flesh. And your flesh always want to go contrary to God's word. Every time. I don't care who flesh it is. My flesh, your flesh, all flesh. All flesh want to go contrary. Amen? So we have to learn how to crucify this flesh. Galatians chapter what? Chapter 2. Look at verse number 20. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. If I'm going to deal with my anger, I have to crucify this flesh. Amen. Galatians chapter 2, verse number 20. Look what it says. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. The Amplifier says, I have been crucified with Christ, in him have I shared his crucifixion. It is no longer I who live, but Christ the Messiah lives in me. And the life I now live in the body, I live by the faith in, by adherence to and reliance on the complete trust in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself up for me. Now here Paul says that because I crucified my flesh, I've allowed Christ to live in me. All right? Y'all wait? All right, all right, all right. Amen. Now think about this for a second. If Christ is living on the inside of us, and he is, would Christ punch somebody's lights out? Okay? Would Christ cuss somebody out? Would Christ shoot somebody the bird? But he's living on the inside of it. So if you do that, then what you're saying is Christ done it. Amen. And everybody who know that you are a Christian who is unsaved would think, well, if that's the type of Christ in you, I don't want your Christ. I mean, if we, if we just learn to put the facts together and see that we are, and go to 2 Corinthians, I just got to show you, just, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Amen. We just can't do anything we want to do. If we're saved, going to heaven, Sister Preston, we can't do what we want to do. I mean, we cannot have road rage like everybody else. Amen. We have to yield to that. You know, I mean, when somebody wants to cut us off, just let them go. Amen. But we're not our own. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, look at verse number 20. Look what it says. Now then we are what? Ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We are ambassadors for Christ. 
We are extensions of his, his, uh, his love toward mankind. And if we operate in anger, guess what? We're not good ambassadors. And, and, and right now, I mean, if the, if, if the ambassadors who are to foreign countries act a fool, the president have the right to call them home and replace them. Ooh, praise the Lord. Amen. Go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Talk about how to deal with this anger. Amen. I have to crucify my flesh. Romans chapter 8. Look at verse number 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 8. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. All of our desire is to please the Father. But if I'm allowing my flesh to dictate, to rule, to reign in my life, then the Bible says I can't please God. Amplify says, so then those who are living the life of the flesh, catering to the appetites and the impulses of their carnal nature, cannot please or satisfy God or be acceptable to him. So when I cater to the appetites and impulses of this, nat of this carnal nature, the Bible says, I can't please God. Amen. And it's the carnal nature that want to do things and, and operate in anger. It's not God, the, the, the God nature in us. It's the, it's the carnal nature that's trying to operate. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, what happens when, I, uh, when I'm guided by my flesh? I live like a sinner. When you're operating in the flesh, you live like a sinner. Amen. When you operate in the flesh, you forfeit the benefits of righteousness. Amen. When you operate in the flesh, you pass contamination on to others. Amen. And when you operate in the flesh, uh, it keeps you out of, out of the position to be blessed by God. Because God can't bless you if, you if you're living in the flesh. Can't do it. I don't care how much he loves you. If you're living in the flesh, he can't bless you. Because you cannot please him in the flesh. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 All right. All right. Number three. Number three. What happens when we surrender to anger attack? It demonstrates that we don't operate in forgiveness. It demonstrates that we don't operate in forgiveness. Amen. Now, people who, are, who don't operate in forgiveness have what I call past hurts. A daddy hurt them, a mama hurt them, or a boyfriend hurt them, or, you know, an ex-wife or husband hurt them. And now they're operating in anger. And when they find somebody that's good to them, they don't know how to respond. They don't know how to respond. Simply because I'm waiting on you to do what the other person done. Amen. <laughs> but, but here's the thing. You cannot get over that until you learn how to forgive. Go to Mark chapter 11. Amen. You have to learn how to forgive. If you're going to control this anger, anger issue... You have to learn how to forgive. And many times, it's, it's, it's not the person that's with you right now that you're mad at. It's not. It's the person that, you, that you're thinking about. You, I mean, you see your ex-mate, and now you want to hurt somebody. And your new mate is saying, where that came from? Well, that came from unforgiveness. That came from, you know, the past, that past hurt. Amen. Mark chapter 11. Amen. Look at verse number 23. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23. Hmm. Amen. 